What's going on, everybody? It's your boy here to give you guys a review for Love and Hip Hop New York Season 8, Episode 9, titled Bad Reputation. As you guys can see, I finally got the studio for the most part, still doing some renovations and just trying to make sure everything is good. I'm actually trying to make sure that I have everything in this place before the new year, so kind of got my work ahead of me. But one thing that I'm going to start doing is having a question of the day for each one of these reviews whether it is linked to the actual episode series or just a general question so today is just a general question and that is how was your holiday and so you guys so actually what holiday did you celebrate and how was it that's the question so what holiday did you celebrate how was it so i celebrated a hanukkah all right and just so i can make sure i have the right dates because it's eight days total so hanukkah for me started sunset on the 12th and ended sunset on the 20th so eight days did some deep fried food i didn't go ham like i normally did and so let's see i did deep fried apple pies turned out amazing i tried to do sufgani old which is a uh, jelly filled donut i ended up just doing a powder donut because the um icing uh bag that i bought was a very very cheap one i thought that it would have been strong enough <clears throat> to uh, pipe the uh, jam that I had it wasn't so just regular powder donuts did some funnel cake and some mustard batter chicken fingers so that was my Hanukkah that was my holiday and you know like I said y'all know for my birthday I gave y'all two videos but other than that I just rested the last four days I had Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday off and I have this upcoming Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday off so I cannot wait <laughs> So, with that being said, <clears throat> let's get into this review. This is the first time for a Love and Hip Hop that I have actually two pages front and back of notes. Because it was so much that went on. I want to try to give you guys the most of it. There's one part that I didn't really hit a whole lot for because I just want to talk about it. But we'll get there. So, picking up where we left off. The little uh, scuffle, if you will, between... <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm thinking about... Uh, uh, Alexander Rodgers video where he calls Jack uh, Jacquay Jacket <laughs> with Jacquay and um what's that boy name James so self pretty much his whole thing is he wants to bring the guys together because he really mu he pretty much wants to squash whatever beef there is because in his mind it really isn't that big of an issue and that he doesn't want this to turn into anything pretty much he don't want this to turn into no street shit so he gives them pretty much just to sit down, come to terms, all the good jazz. And his and self said, it would appear that this whole thing is over a female. Pretty much just trying to say, like, y'all really finna sit here and go at it over a female. Like, is it really that big and that significant that y'all about to sit here and fuck with y'all careers, fuck with y'all bottom line over females? That serious. And Jacquay, he asked, he pretty much want to know, like, you know she was mine, you know, when y'all was doing this whole thing, whatnot. James pretty much said, like, hey, man, she pretty much just kind of do the damn thing at me, so I just took the bait. And Jacquay was like, you know what? Hey, man, you did me a favor. You took this baggage off my hands. And we'll revisit that in a second. I know some people kind of felt like, oh, wow, how can, you, like, how can he just up and say that after he had feelings? But it's just like, if all she did was bring all this damn drama, all this trouble, that is baggage. Either somebody's going to add to your life <laughs> in a positive way or a negative way or take from it. In this case, she added some negative shit but took a whole lot from him. So, yeah, hey, it's fucking baggage, you know. Now, quiet as it's kept, yeah, this was like, I'm hearing that this was just a storyline relationship. I'm probably going to close this window because I think. I hope y'all can't hear what the fuck is going on outside, but he's actually, it's going through the rumor that he, either he was dating, meaning that at the time he was dating and still is dating, or he is just currently dating, uh, Cayenne, the girl that, um, Bianca brought over to, uh, Mariah Lynn's place. But anyway, <clears throat> Mariah comes in. Now, to my understanding, she was not invited, but she just decided to pop up. Her whole intentions of being there was to show James what he lost. So pretty much, you're coming there to start shit. She's perking her titties up all up in the face and shit. And, you know, she says that she's mad about how he betrayed her, this and the third. 
James was okay. And she, he began to try to charm her. And her whole thing is, oh, so you're only doing this because the other one ain't here. And she gets mad, walks out. Now, that's this beautiful ice sculpture. Ice sculpture ain't do shit to nobody. She is trying to knock it down, but she can only spin it. And then it falls over. And I think she says something along the lines of, I'm a cold bitch and I'm going to leave your ass frozen. Don't quote me. Don't quote me. Yeah. I mean, granted, Mariah has those, you know, one-liners. But, yeah, she kind of fell flat with that one. All right. <clears throat> so, Yandy and Remy. They, Yandy is getting good together for Hurricane Relief. Remy says that Fat Joe hit her up because he's trying to, and I believe they're trying to send, uh, send um, stuff to uh, Puerto Rico. And he has a plane that he's going to send over there. All good gestures, but my whole thing is this. Look, Mo Mona, come here, come here, Mona, come here. I do my best to sit here and try to overlook shit. Why y'all fronting on us? Now, I'm not going against this being a good ge gesture because it is. I used to work in retail, okay? I worked at Target, or as the bougie call it, Target. I did overnight stock and receiving, so I'm very well versed with pallets. Taking the pallets down, putting them together, putting a the wrap over it, all that good shit. Come on now. Y'all really expect me to believe they had that big ass pallet. They were going to sit here and pack all of that. I believe it was water or some type, whatever, into the back. I'm not saying that they weren't doing something good, but come on now. Let's try to really make this shit believable. Now that they finna try to sit here and pack all of that into that one vehicle. Even though they said something else was coming, they didn't speak on the size. And then even Yanny tried to sit here and go into. Don't do that. Don't do that. But Remy did bring up that they ain't seen Juju. And Yandy defaults to, oh, well, maybe she's pregnant and ain't trying to share it with us. And <clears throat> Yandy, like, we just going to pop up. I'm sitting here like, okay, see, I can, I'm going to let you know right quick. I don't give a fuck who you is. You could even be my mama. God knows I loves my mama. I might only do a surprise pop up. And if it's a surprise pop up, other people going to know about the surprise. You feel what I'm saying? And even then, I don't even like doing that shit because I don't like showing the people places uninvited, unannounced. I like to announce my presence before I fucking get there. You ain't finna sit here and come knocking on my... Actually, no, I'll probably get a pass to my dudes because she is my dudes. Only person. Other than that, you do a pop-up at my place. It's Shay's gonna be, uh... Is it, I believe, Lil' Richard. Keep on knocking, but you can't come in. Right now. I ain't bullshitting you. So, <clears throat> the, sh the funniest thing is, Yanny talking about doing an over overnight bag. Remy like, no, nah, I can't do that. And she's like, oh, that's because you got a man at home. And she was like, well, you got the phone, you know, Corey. Like the, like the phone and the whole thing with her hanging up on whatever. I missed it. I didn't write it down completely. I'm sorry. I know I fell through with that. The shit was funny, though. Y'all watch it, though. Then we got Ashley Navarro, Rich, and I. So, I'm still trying to figure out what Rich is entire thing is with Anais but I guess he's there trying to help her out dealing with those two so Navarro whole thing is look these two grown I ain't getting grown for business because they ain't got shit to do with business the bottom line and and uh, Anais just like I like his banana he like my donut we make good breakfast that, that I, I, I don't know why but I hollered I was just like what the fuck you know and as much as most of us don't like Anais I like her craziness like she brings a certain element of spice to this motherfucking show so I like her. um so Navarro says he okay I already said that Ashley comes in with a motherfucking attitude now she already upset about what's going on between her and Navarro so she takes that projects that onto Rich coming at him about being with a married woman or whatnot and he looking at her like you are being this damn motherfucking respectful like I don't know what this is and she is coming at him now on some real shit we can agree like I need for y'all let me know how this could have been rectified because I think that personally Navarro probably should have jumped in and been like hey whoa 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 this is jumping over the boundaries of business I applaud Rich for not going in I don't know what I would have done chances are like if I uh, he he was drinking so I don't know I Y'all know how I get when I be drinking sometimes. Shit just come the fuck out. If it's a business meeting, I probably wouldn't be drinking. So I probably would have done what Rich did. It's, I wouldn't have came to her like, are oh, you being respectful? I would have just gotten up and I wish to remove myself. You know, don't even need all that.
So, <clears throat> and she even said, "You know, like do like do you need help finding a, a wife? You know, she's already somebody wife. Like shit was coming out of her mouth was fucking crazy. So, <clears throat> Rich gets up and leave, <clears throat> and Naval was trying to talk to her. She flips the fuck out on him, and then she did. She took her motherfucking finger, put that shit on that motherfucker forehead, and like did that." I was, and like it wasn't a t she muffed his ass. I was just like, ladies, la ladies, like I, again, I know most of my fan base, like, ladies. Please keep y'all motherfucking hands to yourself. <clears throat> I, I I really want y'all to keep y'all hands to yourself because I don't know if y'all listen to Mother Whoopi Goldberg when she said, you know, don't put your hands on the man. If y'all ain't seen that, go back and watch it. Go find it. It's online. Don't put your hands on man. Then she sat here and poured a drink on. I think she grabbed another drink and poured it on. I'm just like, Lord. But he kept his cool. But you could... I don't even know if that shit was in the script. Okay. Alright. So, Ashley and Navarro, we get to them later on. I told you, like, I took notes. Damn it, I took notes and shit. <clears throat> so, she's upset with him and blames... Um, I'm, she, I'm sorry. <clears throat> She's upset with herself for how she blew up at that fucking meeting because it wasn't right. And I, I if I'm not gonna say, I believe she was packing for herself. She confronts him like, you know, you've been cheating and everything. Now you already accused him of cheating with Anais. Now you accuse him of cheating with this with this random individual. And I'm trying to figure out like, did you even read the text messages from the female that you accused him of cheating with? Because he even said that he was trying to do something nice for her. But he knows she's a jealous type. So he was trying to surprise her, but she's a jealous type. This is one of those where he probably should have had him up. Probably should have had a motherfucker like Rich to put the motherfucking shit together for him. I'm just saying, probably wouldn't have worked either way, but it would have been better to have an outside source to do all this shit. But she's flipping out, and he's like, I was trying to do something nice for her. She was like, well, is this the way you're supposed to treat your pregnant girlfriend, wifey, whatever the fuck she is to him? And he is like, okay, so we pregnant. <clears throat> and it's like, that shit, like, like really going to spread it up on a motherfucker like that? But that explains her irrational behavior, her waking up late, all these other things. And I think that if she truly is pregnant, has she mentioned that before? We probably wouldn't even be here right now. He gets upset. He fucking leaves. Now, I'm going to try to speed this shit up. Because, I mean, we already at 13 minutes. And like, it's like I really ain't even said shit. <clears throat> so, you got Peter Rich and Self. So, Self feels that the spotlight <clears throat> is more on Dream Doll than it is Mariah. Which... In his mind, it should be more on Mariah. So they pretty much asked him, right here, right now, if you had to pick and choose, who would you say is the queen right now? He gives it the dream doll. And pretty much that's it. Now, Peter was, uh, his whole thing just like, oh, I'm sorry. And Cell said that because Dream Doll has a single that's number 20 on iTunes. But he says it's in his confessional, which confessionals are more present day than actually what happened. So, eh. Now, Peter, he, he, he wonders if Mariah is going to give her props because, you know, she's doing her thing. Rich is like, no, nah, I can tell you right now that since he had two females, the other one will be mad at Matt because the management ain't doing what the fuck they're supposed to do because one is doing better than the other. So then we get Trent and Jonathan. Now, I didn't write shit down for this because I was more or less entertained. And I, I, I didn't even know if I was going to cover this shit. I'm out, I'm out of coffee. So they sit down <clears throat> to have this discussion. I know people wasn't here for Trent, but damn it, I was. Because the regardless of whatever, whatever the fuck shit he did, Trent played the fuck. <laughs> Out of Jonathan, I was here for it. I was here for every last fucking bit of Cause he just sitting there cool, calm, and collected. Jonathan is in his motherfucking bag. He is steaming. You could, it's, it's just written all over his face. And <clears throat> they start talking about it. You know, you deceive with this or whatever. I forget what it's called, but pretty much, you know, Jonathan's old trend. You addicted to sex, this, that, and the third. Yeah, 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 blah, 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 blah. He is going the fuck in. I think that maybe he got a little too invested in the motherfucking script the motor game. I don't know. Whatever. <clears throat> so, 
You know, he's like, yeah, you out there, you know, getting your diss up, this, that, that. He was like, oh, well, you just mad because you ain't doing it. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I said that. I was just like, but I can understand why Trent did what he did. I'm trying to remember who the fuck did. It was it, because there's no different than what happened when Anais and Ashley sat down, and Anais was just real cool and egging her the fuck on and getting her more mad. Same exact thing that Trent was doing, just like you know, we gonna play this game, we gonna play. And then Trent's like, you know what? Since we since I'm being deceitful, how about you being deceitful? Pulled out the man motherfucking marriage license. That's and now a lot of people is like, it's all public record. There are some marriages licenses that you can actually keep private, public record. And he's just like, motherfucker, you still married. Yeah, you trying to sit here, and I think he even said trying to get me to marry you. I'm like, well, John there was mad, went the fuck off. Now he did have this one line telling this motherfucker, "I will wear your ass out like a jean jacket." That 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 was a line. That that definitely was a line. So now we got Sophie and look. You know, I'm not even gonna do all this. Sophie and James finna sum this shit up because I don't like either one of the asses. So James won't know why the fuck she wasn't there. She felt like she would have been there more or less, you know, as a show off piece rather than being there as his main girl, which she sort of kind of right because he invited every motherfucker that, you know, especially the motherfucker that she still has feelings for. So she says to him, I regret kissing you because I feel like I was leading you on everything. And the whole entire time, I'm just like, she must have another fucking place to stay because he's her fucking meal ticket. So I'm just like, enter fucking resting. And to fuck, and this one was just like, I hope she got a place to stay, cause if not, I would have been like, okay, this is the last motherfucking time you gonna be sitting here staying with me. So, you know, she even said that she still has feelings for Jaque, and he's just like, okay, well, this is the same motherfucker that said that you, you know, he was glad I took the baggage off his hand. So then she tries to do a fucking Jedi mind trick, she's like, well, what did you say to defend me? What? So you ain't claiming this motherfucker, but you want him to defend you? Okay, all right. She gets mad and was just like, this is why I didn't want to get invested, all this other stuff. This is why I was guarding myself. Again, she straight pulled a nigga move. That's what she did. Got up. He knocks over his drink. I guess she thought that he tried to throw it. So she throws her drink and scurries off. I'm just like, see? I can't. Now, Mariah and Self meet up at a, at a car wash. Her whole thing is she feels like he's not doing a whole lot for her he tells her that you need to hustle more she brings up the fact that okay so while i was dreaming about the bet awards and i wasn't if i wrote it down correctly i believe he said that she said that she would pay her way to get there so she's putting forth the work the effort what i will say is it seems as if it was somewhat extended, like that opportunity was extended to Dream Doll. If you go extend it to one, you have another artist. Why not extend it to the other artist? Give her that same opportunity. I feel like he pan he's playing favorites. And if I can just make a mention, you see how he's doing her in the same exact way that he did Cardi B. Where's Cardi B? She didn't blew up, but she's not signed to him. And I ain't listen to Dream Doll shit. I ain't trying to, but I'm pretty sure Mariah Land shit still bops more than fucking Dream Doll shit. But I'm I'm gonna just keep going because it's it's some more to that that I'm gonna talk about. Cause I'm almost son. I'm gonna try to keep this under 25. <clears throat> so that's pretty much it. They go over so Remy and um Yanni go over to see Juju. Juju broke up with Cameron. That's why she been sheltering herself in. Moving on. So Self Dream of Safari. So Self wants Dream Doll to pretty much go and try to build up her Gwen and sister. And Self was out of line because he's talking about confidential shit between one client to another client. Pretty much talking about her faltering career, this, that, and the third. And it's just like, you didn't even need to tell all that. All he could have just said is, I see you hustling, I see you grinding. Can you go ahead and you know try to, you know, work with your sister over there? Safari mentions how well he's already gonna do a record with Mariah Lynn now. Dream Doll was here for it until she heard that. Now she tried to check him like he can't do it. He looked at her like I ain't got shit to do what the fuck y'all going. It's one of the ways just like who the fuck is you to say and tell me who the fuck I can't work with? And she shut the fuck up real quick, but in her defense, she's gonna try to shut it down the best way she knows how. 
And I'ma just and to go ahead and uh, knock this out, Trent Jonathan, Trent tries to go apologize to Jonathan, but they already done. I don't give a fuck about the rest of that shit. And this shit. <clears throat> so Mariah and uh Dream Doll. So Dream is trying to sit here and say that the only reason there's an issue is because, you know, trying to say that I forget who said it, but Dream Doll tried to pretend as if she didn't bring Mariah in this when she actually did. I really do wish Love and Hip Hop would have pulled a Bravo households of whatever franchise you want to mention and play back the whole fucking scene, but they didn't. But Dream Doll, yeah, you did bring Mariah Lynn into this and they start going back and forth. And then it is at this point that Dream Doll uses what self told her as ammunition, talking about some your fucked up career, you not even paying self, you know, his percentage, whoop bop de whoop. And she even said self wanted me to come here to help you with your fault to recreate this that, and third. So now shit just went left. And they start arguing back and forth. And next thing you know, fucking them dream doll said your mama. For most for most hood motherfuckers, you don't sit here and tell a motherfucker your mama. Now, when I say that she went and pulled a Monique slider, when I say this bitch got an airborne, when I say she turned into a motherfucking flying squirrel, got up on the damn picnic table and and flew. Okay, she was Red Bull today. Bitch had wings. Security heard it became me and had they back to Mariah. So as Mariah was trying to jump to get to Dream Doll, security came in like this. So she actually jumped on security back. And if y'all if y'all watch closely, y'all see Dream Doll backed up, right? Dream Doll. So I guess Dream Doll is such a bad girl, but I look like she didn't want them hands. And the whole entire time, it appeared that Mariah Lynn was trying not to show that she was bothered until that comment came. And it was just like, okay, I'm finna get at you. The best way that I know how. But one thing I'm gonna say, so you fucking up, man. Cause one thing you need to realize is Mariah Lynn is making moves without you, my dude. She already is work hopefully has a collab working that's coming with Remy Ma. Has already herself reached out to Safari, even though you cool with Safari, but you can sit here and put Dream Doll with Safari, but not Mariah Lynn with Safari, but Mariah Lynn did it herself. Mariah Lynn, if you ever watch this motherfucking video, hey, you making money, moves. <laughs> you don't need his ass. You really don't. Plus, do you really want a motherfucker that let Carter B slip through his hands and sit here and be managing you? Anyway, that's all I got, y'all. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. Also, don't forget to answer the question today in the comment section below. And I will see you guys in the next video, which I believe should be Little Women Atlanta. I think then I think that's a video. I don't know if the household is coming on this Sunday. If so, y'all will probably get whoo New Year's Eve Sunday. Mm, if it does come out, y'all probably gonna get it later. And then of course, uh, love hip hop again, and also uh, love hip hop Miami. So that's all I got. I'll see you guys later. Peace.